Well, hello everyone. I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to Monday's edition of Take 5. Man, it is so good to be back with you. Uh, I missed not doing these devotions last week. You know, Sunday before last we had Teen Challenge and I didn't preach and so we just took last week off. Uh, but I preached yesterday, and we are right back at this getting started. Hey, let me encourage you. We started a new sermon series yesterday about the importance of reading and studying the Bible and, and really getting into the Word of God and applying it to our life. And so if you missed yesterday, I would want to encourage you, you need to be in church to hear what God is speaking to us about His Word through His Word right now. Uh, so I want to kind of preface uh, this series by telling you about some things that we just did uh, together as a church. We just completed a fundraiser for Light for the Lost, and I, I wanted to take the time to begin this new sermon series by talking briefly about Light for the Lost and the funds that we just um, raised and, and how this really is going to tie in to what we are talking about. Now, I'm going to be brief because I can't tell you everything that I told you in, in service yesterday. Light for the Lost provides evangelistic resources for missionaries and missionary partnerships through five platforms around the world, through the platform of print, audio, video, internet, and technologies like computer apps and things like that. Life of the Laws has one guiding principle that overarches everything that it does, and that is this, that all Light for the Lost assistance, all of the proceeds that go to Light for the Lost are all used 100% to provide resources that are directly related to evangelism. So Light for the Lost is not in it to make money. Now, in our part of the country, there's really definitely no shortage of Bibles or Christian-related uh, resources and literature, but you can't say that everywhere. Um, in an effort to raise funds for Light for the Lost, I challenged the members of our church to give $10 for each printed Bible that they had in their home. Now, when the results came in, you know, like about the 22nd uh, of October or something like that, it turned out we had 30 participants. Some were families, some were individuals. And those 30 participants gave a total of $2,800 in the month of October for Light for the Lost. Now, if you do the math on that, and if everyone followed our plan, that's about an average of nine Bibles per home. Now, I know some gave more and some gave less, but that's still a lot of Bibles for 30 participating families to possess. That's over 280 Bibles that 30 participants in our one little church in this little community that we possess, that we own, that we have inside of our houses. And that's astronomical, especially when you consider that we're raising money for people and families and churches and pastors who do not even have one Bible that's translated into their language. Some of them have never even seen a Bible. And how can they be saved if they never heard or seen God's Word? Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. I'm sharing this series with you. We started this because it really bothers me to think that we have so many Bibles that we can come up with 280 Bibles, over 280 Bibles, out of just 30 participants, we can produce that many Bibles and yet know so little about them. You know, sometimes I think that we believe that just owning the Bibles will help us, but that's like thinking owning a bar of soap will make you clean. If, if, if you don't take that bar of soap and use it, you will not get clean. And, and if you don't apply the Bible to your life, it won't change your life. You can stand in that shower and just sit there and look at that bar of soap all day long, and by the end of the week, you're going to stink. That's just all it is to it. you got to use it. It's the same with the Word of God. There was a Bible scholar, historian, theologian, teacher, whatever you want to call him, by the name of Finnis Jennings Dake, who has a documented 100,000 hours of Bible study that he did in 43 years. That's more than six hours a day. And he had a very lengthy statement that he made about the Bible. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I will read the first two sentences. This is what it says. The Bible is not an amulet, a charm, a fetish, or a book that will work wonders by its very presence. 
It is a book that will work wonders in every life here and hereafter if acted upon and obeyed in faith and in sincerity. If you have a uh, a Dake's Bible, uh, if you have one of those, I encourage you go to the very front and flip a few pages and you can find that thing there and read it, man. It's powerful what he said uh, about the Word. So we're going to spend a few weeks talking about the necessity of reading and studying the Word of God because somehow... 30 participants can manage to come up with over 280 Bibles, and we have people around the world that are trying to have church and don't even have one Bible that has been translated into their language, and we have all these Bibles, and yet we know so little about them and about what we say uh, that we believe, and so I think it's important that we do this. I want you to know something. If you're saved today, you are betting your eternal lives on the words of the Bible that most people don't even read. If we're trusting the words of the Bible to get us to heaven and to deliver us from the horrors of hell, then we need to become more familiar with its teachings because it contains the heart, the thought, and the desires of God. And we must ask ourselves, why would we want to own so many copies of the Bible as we do here and not read and understand it. I will read the text that we're going to use this week, and I'll leave it with you on this Monday. Psalm 119.11 says, Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes or your word. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. That's his word. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. In other words, I love your word more than wealth and money itself. I'll meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Verse number 11 of our text started by saying this, your word have I hidden in my heart. And verse 16 says, I will not forget it. Your word have I hidden and I will not forget it. And for the next few weeks, we're just going to deal with that thought, hidden or forgotten. What is the word of God in your life? Well, hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Tuesday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great day. And remember, friend, trust the Lord. He will never fail you.